I'm going to see if this moves from this. As a person who's accustomed to narrating in the sightseer car of the California Zephyr, I don't use a podium, I also don't read a script, so you'll have to bear with me. But I'd like to thank all of you for coming out today. Uh, we actually have had the locomotive for about a year. It came in to uh, Ogden on a Union Pacific freight train. It was, as I recall from my notes, and Lee Whitten in the background there may correct me on this, wasn't it a 117 car long freight train from Salt Lake City back in August of last year? It was a working engine right up until the moment it arrived here at the museum. Now, the 5371 is very significant. It's the last intact, and that's the operative word, functioning Denver and Rio Grande Western locomotive anywhere, modern diesel locomotive. As the Union Pacific and Southern Pacific merged, the Rio Grande and Southern Pacific had merged in 1989. The uh, Union Pacific took over Southern Pacific, the resulting company, in 1996. So it wasn't that UP got the engine from Rio Grande, they actually got it through Southern Pacific. It's fitting, it's parked with the SP engine next door to it. But this locomotive was a part of a dwindling fleet of original Rio Grande engines assigned out of Helper, Utah. And the 5371 ended up being the last one to operate in regular freight service. And I had put in a word to Union Pacific uh, over 10 years ago, it was actually in early 2000, that the Ogden Museum did not have a DNRG diesel locomotive, and that whenever the last of the Helper engines were retired, we wanted that engine, whichever number it was. It ended up being the 5371. For a long time, we thought we were going to get 5390, but it got shipped off to Chicago and repainted as a part of the UP's redoing of uh, former locomotives from other railroads. Now, the General Motors SD40 T2 locomotive, and the T2 is not an official designation. To GM, this was an SD40-2. But the railroad buff community persevered in putting the T for tunnel designation on the engine because of its custom low-mounted radiator intakes, which you can see when you sit in the right place down along the back end of the locomotive along the catwalk. So the T2 designation, while never official from GM, has now become official in the historic annals of these locomotives. The engines operated to Ogden, Salt Lake, to Denver, and Pueblo, Colorado. That was the extent of the Denver and Rio Grande system. In keeping with the history of that railroad that was completed in 1888 between Salt Lake and Denver, uh, with us today we have a friend of mine, somebody who I've known since my days as an Amtrak official. He's one of the oldest still living, still functioning Rio Grande employees. Daniel Monson, who started with the Rio Grande in 1938 and worked right over here at the old Rio Grande Depot, which you can see as you come off 24th Street, from 1939 until 1942 when he uh, went into the Coast Guard for World War II. And he stayed with the railroad and ended up retiring as the chief clerk of the Rio Grande down at Roper Yard in Salt Lake in 82. So, Dan, stand up. This is the last functioning locomotive of your railroad. Now in the back, he was he's standing way back there trying to look inconspicuous, there's Bob Geyer. Now Bob, you have to wave so people can see you. Now don't turn around, he's holding the blue book in the, in the looks like a flowered shirt. Bob deathly, dearly wanted a Rio Grande model GP30, but they all ended up getting scrapped. They're probably part of a Toyota right now someplace. But uh, we never got the GP30, but Bob, we got a Rio Grand engine here, and you were a big part of that, so thanks to him. Also, we have Mike Burdett of the Railway and Locomotive Historical Society trying to hide back there under the tree. Mike's group was very helpful to the uh, museum's board, to Lee Whitten, the museum's librarian, right back here, Wave Lee and to Roberta and the others in getting the letters off to Union Pacific. I ended up dictating them, they'd write them, they'd send them off. Being a former road official, I kind of knew how to communicate with the railroads. It's a certain way you do that. And last but not least, we want to thank Union Pacific, because it was their engine. We have Dan Harbeck, their uh, Director of Public Relations for the State of Utah. Dan, raise your hand. If it wasn't for their kindness and generosity, actually none of this equipment would be here. 
because every one of these engines with these are donated directly by the Union Pacific to our museum, or the Union Pacific assisted in bringing the engines here at no cost to us. And the UP, it should be noted, is the only major North American railroad that still maintains two steam locomotives as a part of their historic preservation program. Those engines do visit Ogden Union Station periodically. Now, I'm not going to go into all the history of what it took to get this engine, but there was one person who helped me keep tabs on this locomotive the last three years before it was retired. He's now retired from the Union Pacific. He was a, see, Tom, were you a machinist? At the uh, Salt Lake Diesel Shop, which is now the Front Runner Diesel Shop and Car Shop, and later at Roper Yard. In fact, on three different occasions, I was made aware that the engine was actually in the shop for work. And there was a danger UP might renumber it with a UP number, which would have destroyed its original appearance. And I would go over to the shop and talk with the shop foreman and bring out my letter from Jim Young, the president of Union Pacific, that basically said he knew we wanted the engine and don't touch it. The last time I did that was on a Thursday morning before a three-day weekend, back about three years ago. And when I walked in the shop foreman's office and produced the letter, he said, you must have telepathy. He pointed to a box in the corner. He said, that's the stencil kit for renumbering the engine. They were going to start in 45 minutes to repaint it. That's how close it came on the final occasion. After that, when the engine was taken out of service, it was taken over to Denver, later to Cheyenne, and eventually made its way back home here to Utah. So we have the engine today. So Tom Dial of Union Pacific, formerly of Union Pacific, right there. If there's a, a, a person along with myself that really helped Ogden get this engine, it was Tom working behind the scenes, helping keep me informed of what was happening with this last unrepainted, unrenumbered Rio Grande locomotive. Now, as far as the significance of the engine, why does it have that low-mounted radiator? When I want to direct your attention to the Southern Pacific locomotive here, that engine's another one of my little projects with Union Pacific. The UP was kind enough to give us the Southern Pacific SD45 as a part of the 2002 Winter Olympics. That was the very first engine of that kind on Southern Pacific. There were 356 of them, and they operated into Ogden from the west, and then continued east over UP tracks from 1966 up till 1995. There was one problem with this particular GM locomotive. Locomotive builders assume that trains are going to run out in the wide open spaces at high speeds with all of the outdoors to cool their radiators. Well, how many of you, by a show of hands, have ever been on Donner Pass in California? Okay, there's a lot of snow sheds up there. Most of them are gone now, but there are still, I think, 25 of the original 44 tunnels that are still in operation. Now, let's say you've got five of these engines on a freight train, and you're going up Donner, or known as the hill to railroaders, at 20 miles an hour. Imagine how hot the air at the top of a tunnel gets when the third, fourth, and fifth engine passes spot X. Temperatures in excess of 250 degrees were measured. In fact, in some cases, the high temperatures would peel the paint off the locomotives. As a result, if you look at the back end of the SP engine, and those of you sitting over here, you'll just have to take my word for it, or you'll have to trot over here and take a look. There's a big flared radiator intake. Now, anywhere else that worked great, but in tunnels and snow sheds that did not work. The engines would do something in the railroad industry we call short cycling. The engines would suck in their own hot exhaust and hot radiator air back into their own cooling system. That would raise the temperature of the cooling water in the locomotive. Now, an engine like this, the, the SB engine has a V20. Now there's 645 cubic inches in each one of those 20 cylinders. The motor block alone, it's a hollow rack, not an open block, but it weighs, what did you say, Tom, about 5 or 10 tons for the block alone? For one of those? I'm not exactly sure. He never tried to lift one, that's why he's still with us.